So why did we convert it to electric? Weight. Weight for what? No, weight of the bike. Oh, weight. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, right, the ZZR yeah. weighs in around about, I don't know, 190, 200 kilos. Oh, OK. Which you think, all right, that's not too much problem. By the time we'd added all the aluminium and all the steel and all the other bits and pieces, it was about 250, well, 250, 275 kilos. So we were loading it on the truck and we were moving it around and it was just a pain. So stripping out all the engines stripped out most of the weight. Okay. So, all right, the motor adds weight and granted the batteries do add weight. But not but, as much. But, well, no, we save huge amounts of weight on the original okay. bike. So weight was one of the main factors. And then I guess also yeah. in the Tron bikes, they're electric, in the Tron films, they're electric bikes. Yeah, kind of. Like, I mean, the problem is it's not a real film though, is it? It's kind of a superimposed computer world. Yeah, yeah, that first so, film, it was made in 1982 and it's set inside a video game where you drove the light cycles around. Well, it was a, it was a revolutionary technique. What they did is they basically, they filmed the actors, so it was live action filming. Yeah. Uh, and then they superimposed the animation over the top. It's called rotoscoping. Like with the suits and everything. Yeah, so it was the first time it was really done yeah. like that in a major feature film. It was, it was pretty impressive. And that film was really cool because those bikes, they were designed by Sid Mears. He's the guy that designed the spinner and loads of other yeah, like he's vehicles. designed everything. Any vehicles in the space show, it's yeah. probably him that's designed it. He designed it, it at some point. out as an automotive designer. Yeah. So they were brilliant. And then they remade the film in 2010. Yeah. And that time, Parker Brothers made six of the bikes with the hubless wheels. See, that they film, are so cool. Yeah, that film was very different. It's spectacular again, yeah. amazing. But yeah, to see the bikes actually made full size, real, yeah. from the film was amazing, but there's still a bit of a handful to write as to drive around. Oh yeah, it kind of had gone full circle because in the first bike everything was animated, yeah. whereas in the final film they really wanted to make it feel like a real thing and they, that's why they made the bikes for real I guess. But our bike doesn't look like no. either of them. No, ours isn't a replica, it's okay. ne it was never meant to be a replica, it's basically, it's it's massively influenced from the 1950s, this idea of the, the 1950s utopian view of the future of everything yeah. sailing around, making things in silver, made with battery power, like solar robotics. panels, and, and that was the idea. And then it's got a bit of kind of the Egyptian thing going yeah, on, it looks and like an animalistic. Or a sarcophagus, or a well, it's also got the back of it. If you look at it from the back, it's a cobra's head. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, of course, yeah, that was snake. used a lot of in Egyptian hieroglyphics oh, okay. and the cultures and the imagery, and it's all very kind of meshed together to create a completely unique cool. bike. Yeah. But okay. interestingly, the Tron thing came from all the LEDs we put on it. Oh, yeah, we yeah, We did yeah. all the, we did a couple of shows, and then obviously we went out and people were like, oh, it's like a Tron bike, it glows in the dark. And it did, of course, because of all the aluminium and the LEDs shining off the aluminium. And that's where it ended up with the tag name Retrotron. So the plan is to remove that engine from this. I need to keep the frame. This was the Tron bike. It's going to be now converted from a petrol Tron bike, an electric motor Tron bike. It's hard to believe that will replace that. Chain drive system exactly the same, but everything's got to come off. Carburetors, electronics, radiator, engine's got to come out. Everything. But you're a naked bike here. Workshop is full of crap. This was the old Tron bike, or our retro Tron bike. It was a 600cc 120 brake horsepower engine, but we've taken the engine out, number one, because it's just too heavy, and number two, because it was too heavy. Um, so the engine was there, we've taken it all out, we replaced it with an electric motor, which is now sitting here, kind of clamped in at the moment. You can see it's driving through a main sprocket, through onto the back wheel. And obviously when the motor applied, power is applied to the motor, the back wheel will go round. This big area here, unfortunately, will be full of batteries. So we'll run it either at 36 volts or 48 volts. I don't know yet. It's an old wheelchair motor, but it's been tweaked. So it should give us a good speed, actually. It should be quite good. Now, um, all these brackets are going to be welded in in a minute. So this one is going to fit here, but this is going to be unusual because that will be welded in, but then here is going to have to be a tensioning system because we're going to need to tension this chain because you can see at the moment it's just it's, it's too slack so what I'm going to do weld that on there and then have a, an adjuster here and it will pull this bar basically backwards and forwards which will allow us to tension the chain and then we've got power on it it should go that simple really it's sunny <laughs> it's very sunny it makes a change um motor's in bolted and welded in. We're now going to have a test and see if the back wheel goes round.
So I'm going to put some power onto it. So chain, good tension for an electric motor. So at the moment, this is a bit crude. It's just sticking two wires on the battery. But let's see if it goes round. Three, two, one. Yeah. What if you put some weight on it though? It ain't going to go at all. And then we reverse that and it goes the other way. Hold on, let me just look at the reversing. All I did is turn the wires round. Ah, uh, okay, so yeah. Literally, you just swap the current. I just swap the current. And all the speed controller does, see, that swap. Yeah. Goes the other way. Now this is a tiny, tiny little motorcycle battery. They will be, that's only 12 volts. We'll be running on 36 or 48 volts. And right. that is much bigger than that. So we'll have a lot more power. So we'll be able to move when someone's got the weight on it. Oh, this will, this will move. Yeah, yeah. It'll yeah. Move. It'll, yeah. Move no problem. Yeah. So that's successfully tensioned. Yeah, done. Wow. Okay. Good to go. Let's have a go then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at the moment it's all. Let's see what the weight is. It still feels heavy to me, but you're telling me it isn't. You're telling me well, I'm pushing against the engine. You're pushing against the engine. Now, obviously, at the moment that's just a, a mock up battery, just to give you an idea of the weight and the height of the weight. Now, we could put the battery much lower but I'm not sure we need to it's actually yeah. easy easy to yeah. maneuver how much unheavier will it feel if we put it lower mm, it'll just have a lower center of gravity does it make a big difference swinging it like if you could hang it from under this bar rather than putting it on it yeah you wouldn't feel the weight as much you wouldn't feel the upper weight Tron project. So as you can see now we've taken some of the bodywork off. Now the real challenge here is going to be to get these batteries into this space. Now unfortunately it's one of the negative aspects of electric vehicles in that you've got to carry batteries and they're extremely heavy. So they might not look like very big batteries and very heavy batteries but they're going to add more than enough weight to this motorcycle. So the trick is going to be now to work out, obviously we've got the electric motor which is mounted in here. The real trick now is going to be to work out whether we mount these batteries high up, because there is actually a bracket already there for them, or whether I need to put them down really, really low to the ground. So that's what basically we're going to work on next. It's, it's dropping the, the batteries down, so it's going to have a lower centre of gravity. Once that's in, the batteries will be able to sit on that and that will keep them nice and secure and snug. They won't go anywhere. Okay. Next step now is to finish off welding this, weld it in, and then uh, we'll get the batteries in. So you can see here, we've got the batteries all in now. So we've got the battery carrier built, batteries are in. So the first three will run the 36 volts. We've decided to go with 36 volts for the main drive. And then this little battery here is gonna run the lighting system. They've all been put into a, a battery tray like a little unit here that will house them. Centre of gravity on the bike is quite low so it should be quite neat and tidy and you shouldn't feel the weight too much. There we go. So batteries are in, next stage is wiring them all up. Now obviously we've got the batteries in, we can't just connect the batteries to the motor because that won't work. I mean the motor will go round but there will be no control. So we need an electronic speed control and that's where this comes in. Now these ones are very, very cheap Chinese made uh, electronic speed controls for electric motorcycles uh, or electric bikes rather, I should say. Um, when you first look at them, you do have your doubts. They don't weigh anything. And when you open them up, the electronics are interesting. However, I've used them on a couple of projects and they do actually work and they work quite well. There is one negative to these. Uh, positive is the price, but one negative is that, as you can see here, they come with lots and lots of plugs and lots of wires. Now, that's fine if they were labelled, and in fact they are labelled, um, however they're labelled in Chinese, and there is no manual with them. Now you can go online and look for information, but it varies massively about what the people are saying that these wires actually do. I've spent a bit of time, I've gone through, I've labelled them myself, and I pretty much know what they do now. This speed controller is going to be connected in here, we're going to put it in a in a, in a particular place, try to put it somewhere where it's going to be relatively waterproof. Then we will connect everything up and get it working. Really, it's very, very simple, actually. This big, chunky wire here, this yellow and blue one, and it's, it's 
a much fatter wire than the others connects to our motor. It's connected, it's a fatter wire because there's more current will flow through the wire. So that one connects to our motor. This one here, again, big chunky wires, red and black. Uh, chunky wires because more current flows through them, connects straight to our battery. And then we've got here, I've labeled this one up, this little tiny one here, is just an on and off switch. When the blue and the red one here are connected together, basically they energize the circuit in here, which, which turns on the electronics within this unit here. This one here, which is three wires, that will go to our variable resistor. Now, what that means is if we just connected our battery straight to our, to our motor, the wheels would go round and we'd have no control. It would just go forward at full speed. So we need to vary the power that goes through to the motor. And we do that with a throttle. And we're using a twist grip throttle here with this one. So when you move it, it applies more power. When it's there, it's off. And that simply connects into here. And that just kind of clips into there. And it, as I said, it's a variable resistor. So I mentioned earlier that we're not gonna just put voltage straight into here. We're actually going to do something. Now, before I talk about that, choosing the right speed controller, there are lots of different types. There are 12 volt, 24 volt, 36 volt, 48 volt. Uh, it, it will just tell you when you buy it what you want. We're running 36 volts. We've got a 500 watt uh, capacity motor, basically. Um, so what I've actually gone for here is a 36 volt unit with around about a 500 watt capacity. So it, it all matches up, it'll all work perfectly. Now, little tip, when you take your feed from your batteries, don't just feed it straight into here. The reason you could do, but the reason I don't, is there's no fuse. Now, it seems to make sense that if we apply a fuse, we put a fuse box into the circuit, if something goes wrong, basically, we're gonna blow a, a 20 pence fuse. If something goes wrong and we're feeding straight into the speed controller, then we could damage the speed controller. So I use these little multi-blocks like this. Now, this particular one, I'm gonna use it for the 12 volt system. So I'm gonna feed 12 volts into these pins here. And then out of here, I'm gonna to feed to the different circuits. So I'm gonna to feed to the lighting circuits in the wheels, the headlights, all the other bits and pieces, and they're gonna come off this. And this will run 12 volts standard blade style fuses. For the main um, system, for the main drive system, the 36 volts, I'm going to fit one of these. Now I fit these to all our vehicles. It's a battery isolator. Now what that means is your main feed for your battery comes in here, and then this feed comes out and goes into your fuses. What this will do when it is engaged, obviously it engages these two. So these two are connected, your battery is all connected up, but when that's opened and removed, your battery's isolated, which makes it very safe for transport fuses. Now, I mentioned earlier about this little fuse box. We're gonna use this for the 12 volt. I'm not gonna use this though for the 36 volt. Now, we only need one fuse. So fuse from the battery, straight through to the isolator, straight through into the speed controller. And we're gonna use one of these. Now, they're really simple. They're basically resettable fuses. So your feed from your battery comes in here, and this will go to the speed controller. And you see here, we press that button, this clicks up. So when that is in the up position, the circuit is broken. When it's in the down position, the circuit's connected. So each of these is rated at, at the different ratings. We're gonna calculate the rating we need. We'll probably be using around about a 50 amp version of one of these. Effectively, if the circuit gets, there's too much, there's more than 50 amps go through, the circuit will trip, it opens the connection, the circuit is broken, it's like a fuse blowing. We can then do that and reset the circuit if we need to. It also acts actually as a very convenient on and off switch because there's a button here, if we press it, it opens the circuit and then we can manually close it. We've looked at the electronic speed control, we've looked at the, uh, the fuses, the isolators. We get asked a lot about the batteries. What batteries do we use? How do you calculate what size batteries you put in a vehicle like this? Um, as I said, we've got uh, around about a 450 watt motor in this one, which we've played around with, so it gives us a little bit of oomph. Uh, and we've got the, uh, we're using SLA batteries. Now, the way you calculate it is unfortunately you've got to do a little bit of maths and a little bit of science. Um, there's a little formula, watts equals volts times amps. What you need to do is you need to calculate or know your wattage, 
when you know your wattage, you know the voltage you're going to input from your batteries, so you can then calculate the ampage that you need for the amount of time that you need to run the electric off. What's equals volts times amps? What's equals volts what's times amps, yes. Yeah. Okay, so how does that work with the Tron bike? Right, okay, got... so... So you think about this in a very, very simple way. OK, you've got your, your motor, which is a 400 watt motor. Yeah, 400 watts. Yeah, 400 watt motor. That's like yep. the power that is, is needed to make it move. Yeah. We know we're running 36 volt batteries. 36 so it's volt. So three 12 watt batteries linked together. Yeah. What we need to decide now is what size batteries we run. So we could run very, very little batteries. Right. And obviously we've got a certain amount of space. We could run small batteries, but they wouldn't run, run, run for very long right. because they don't provide enough amplitude, enough current. Okay. Because a big motor draws lots of current. Current is like the power. No, what power is, is what? Like the power? Yeah. What? Right. What do you think of it so far, Mr. Maker? A bit slow. are going to finish off the Tron bike at last. Um, cutting out an old piece of old material here, a piece of old aluminium. Those of you from the X John Bentley School might recognise, you know, bits that you can get out of a skip, really, really useful. Anyway, plate's going to be mounted in the bike and then we're going to mount the electronics on this plate. So it's going to be basically easy to get to everything. So we've got the plate mounted in the bike now and we've got all the electronics mounted on the plate. Um, everything is actually working really, really well. Batteries are in. It's all wired up and it appears to be working. Now, in terms of kill switches, we've got obviously the main kill switch that is in there and the main fuse. What I've also decided to do is to wire it to the main run switch on the bike. So when the run switch is on, it will activate the electronic speed control when the run switch is off. And also the lighting. So obviously when the lighting on the bike is turned on, the lighting on the bike will come on as well. Because the bike ended up being um, a little bit heavier than we expected, I've added a reverse gear. Now, it's very, very simple, very, very easy to get to when you sit on the bike. You've got a neutral position, you've got forwards, and then you've got reverse. It's that simple. So we've got the, this panel obviously fits here. We're obviously now we're gonna put all the fairing back on the bike, um, but this particular panel here can be removed, and then obviously we can get to the kill switches, the fuses and all the kind of important stuff. But when it's on, it's gonna look really neat, really tidy.